Hello and welcome to our online worship for the Beminster area team. My name's Jo Neary and I'm the team vicar in the team. Uh, this is the second Sunday after Trinity and uh, we had a jolly good fun last week. We went to Salisbury Cathedral for the interment of the new Bishop of Salisbury, Bishop Stephen Lake, uh, who I think will be at Dyleston Synod uh, this week as well. But it was a wonderful service, beautiful singing, very dramatic, lots of um, wandering around and processing, very symbolic, had to be vested in Mitre House in the town. And then he walked through uh, the, the cathedral close and met uh, with various members of the town and the community and then came in through the west doors which were open and it was just beautiful and glorious and during the sermon he gave out to everyone in the congregation a gold envelope and we were told to open it and in it he had preached on the parable of the talents and in it was a letter inviting us to take part in uh, the parable of the talents uh well, i've managed to stick it to my envelope there we are so there's the invitation to take part and in it was a 10 pound note a 10 pound note given uh this 10 pound talent is for you to take home and to make it grow as a sign of the kingdom of god how exciting. Uh, it was given through an anonymous benefactor. So £10,000 was given away in the cathedral on Sunday. And really interesting because it was a biblical moment, obviously, really connected to the scripture that he'd preached. And immediately there were murmurs around, oh, you know, we could have done something better with the £10,000 as one thing. It just reminded me exactly of the commentary on when Jesus anoint, uh, when the woman anoints Jesus's feet. And they say, oh, you know, that oil could have been used for the poor and sold for the poor. But there's something about that outrageous gift of generosity that is really exciting. So there we are. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with mine yet. I think David is planning on asking people to pledge to match the gift and then to set up a hardship fund for those who are facing uh, troubles due to the increase in the cost of living. So, but we'll wait and see. But really, I was just so astounded. What a very bold statement for our new bishop. So we give thanks for him and his ministry and his beginnings in the parishes and the diocese this week. So that was that. Bus busy old week it was. Uh, this week, we're celebrating the second Sunday after Trinity. Our contributors to worship today are Alistair Wheeler, who will be preaching. Uh, Peter Aves and Jackie Bush will be contributing the reading and the intercessions. And of course, we are gathered here to worship together. So let's prepare to worship God. Grace, mercy and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We sing our hymn.
come to our prayers of penitence. The gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, Father forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So we pray the collect prayer for the second Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We listen to our reading. The reading is taken from Luke chapter 9, verses 51 to 62. Jesus' ministry on the way to Jerusalem. As the time drew near for him to ascend to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. He sent messages ahead to a Samaritan village to prepare for his arrival. But the people of the village did not welcome Jesus because he was on the way to Jerusalem. When James and John saw this, they said to Jesus, Lord, shall we call down fire from heaven to burn them up? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. So they went to another village. As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another person, Come, follow me. The man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home to bury my father. But Jesus told him, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Another said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. But first let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, Anyone who puts a hand to the plough and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alistair leads us in a reflection on today's reading. Galilee is about 80 miles north of Jerusalem two or three days journey along the central ridge of high ground that runs north-south through the Holy Land uh, above the ever-deepening rift of the valley that the River Jordan flows down to the Dead Sea below Jerusalem. 
There are these days still actually a very small number of Samaritans who are left in the Holy Land, although sadly only about a thousand of them, with huge health and mental problems due to centuries of inbreeding, marrying only other Samaritans, only distant family relatives. The Samaritans are, though, an intriguing group. They're a group who claim to be the only true Israelites, the true Jews. They claim to be the remnant of the ten northern tribes of Israel left behind in their lands between Galilee and Jerusalem uh, when the huge Assyrian Empire conquered the area in about the 7th century BC. Everybody, on the whole, was deported by the Assyrians, certainly all the leadership, and left only the, the local tribes, the ordinary people of the land there, who became, so they say, the Samaritans, the Assyrians leaving only the two tribes down in the south, the uh, Levites and the tribe of David around Jerusalem. And it's from them, those two tribes, that all modern-day Jewish people claim to be descended. The Samaritans were sadly decimated further by the Babylonian Empire, and then after the time of Jesus, for the last 2,000 years, they've continued to be pressured by Jews, but also by Christians and Muslims to renounce their peculiar beliefs. You see, Samaritans have never accepted that Jerusalem is the only holy place. In the Old Testament, if you read carefully, you will see that there were three or four holy places. And Samaritans have always held on to Mount Gerizim, a biblical place called Shechem, a name that might ring bells for you. Modern Arab city, Nablus, you sometimes see on the television news when another riot happens. Samaritans believe that Mount Gerizim, Shechem, Nablus is the only place to go to really encounter God. And that's what they believed at the time of Jesus too. In that gospel story today, Luke makes it clear that this is a, a turning point, a key time in Jesus' ministry when he felt or decided that the time in Galilee was over, that now was the time to head for the final confrontation in Jerusalem. All that he said and done up until now comes to this focus on the trip south. In Luke's account, you can maybe read between the lines and pick up a wide range of feelings over these next sort of little few chapters and amongst the shrinking group of disciples. Determination, yes, but also excitement amongst the disciples that maybe Messiah's triumph is at hand and maybe now James and John or Peter are going to rule with him in the new kingdom of God when he becomes king over, over, over whom? At any rate, it was perhaps totally unsurprising then that when two or three of the disciples went ahead of the group to try and arrange overnight accommodation on the way south and entered a Samaritan village that the locals sent them away with a flea in their ear because they weren't heading for Mount Gerizim but the south, for Jerusalem, no way, go away. The disciples are a vigorous reaction wanting Jesus to bring down fire from heaven and burn the lot of them up. Uh, is also maybe understandable. Like many people, clearly some at least of the disciples still thought that Jesus' role as Messiah, as Christ, would be to bring down judgment from the heaven on anyone who disagreed with him. Mind you, it does also find, sound a bit challenging, doesn't it, when Jesus is recorded by Luke as twice saying to people wanting to go with them on to the showdown in Jerusalem, but wanting assurance or wanting even time to bury their father, which would normally happen the next day, or go home to say goodbye to the family. Jesus affirms there is no time. Everything now is urgent, decisive, pressing, and they must press on. 
like other passages which we find surprising or a bit in your face, I think we need to take these verses as part of the wider whole. There are times in life when decisions are urgent, but more often, especially with issues of faith and belief and maybe disagreements with others, we take our time to make our minds up. There are also times, as seems almost to be the case with Jesus here, when we are stressed or pick up others around us stressed, and when, like the disciples, we can want God to fix it and sort it. Yet, of course, in and through his whole ministry, Jesus is usually at pains to show welcome, encouragement, dialogue, openness, and encourages his disciples then, and you and I now, to do so also. So perhaps next time someone says they disagree with what you believe, like Jesus, maybe the best answer may simply be not to call down fire from heaven, but to gently and quietly move on. And remembering also that there will be for all of us times of stress in life and in faith when urgent decisions possibly do need to be made and that when those times are upon us Jesus understands because there was that time then when he also was under pressure under stress and heading for deadlines deadlines south in Jerusalem let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We come to our time of prayers. Let us pray. Let us pray. Holy Father, Lord God of creation, thank you for every breath of life you give us. We make many mistakes in life and many excuses for them, but thankfully you do not only see through them, but you forgive us. Help us to follow you more closely in everything we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Jesus, Lord of every nation, please help us now as we pray for peace around the world, especially in Ukraine and Russia, for the Middle East and many parts of Africa. We also pray for all the governments who are negotiating peace treaties for these countries and for all aid agencies working in war-torn areas and all those who are injured and dying this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, our guide and comforter, help us to know your presence and inspire us in all that we seek and do, and guide us in being more Christ-like followers in this world where there is so much darkness that surrounds us. Let us be your light that shines in our villages and towns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, we bring into your compassionate presence all those who are not here today, our families and friends who are suffering, lonely, sick, and are recently bereaved. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us praying. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for worship. Take care, stay safe and we'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.